worship experience. Come on in, come on in. We're so glad to see you. And happy Mother's Day. Hey, hey, hey. So we're going to start with a word of prayer and then we're going to get into it. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for all the blessings you've given us that we see and we don't see. Thank you for all the protection you've given us that we see and we don't see. Thank you for a word of wisdom coming through your vessel. And thank you for giving us something to be happy about each and every day. Amen. Amen. As Pastor says, let's go. So glad you made it. Welcome to this place.
www.stpauloxenhill.org and click on the register for worship button. <laughs> we promise to save you a seat, but if you're not quite ready to come back, it's okay. We're still online 8, 10, 30, and noon every Sunday.
And if you're coming in person, make sure you get here at 1030. <laughs> All right. Now, this week's devotional is through the YouVersion app. If you never participated before, you got to take part. It always adds to our sermon. Yeah. Um, What's this week's topic title? Visioneering. Ooh, Visioneering. Nice, nice, Visioneering nice, is nice. what it's called. All you have to do is go to www.stpauloxahill.org, click on the Ministries tab, and right underneath there, you'll see Devotional. Click on it, and that'll get you started. Okay, the pastor's Bible study is back, and the topic is, it's grow time. And pastor is challenging us to answer the question, what kind of Christian do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a good one. Well, listen, he's going to take us through all the steps towards maturity. So I think you need to tune in. All right. Monday through Friday at 7.30 a.m., we gather for a prayer call to be a part. Just dial 605-313-5874. What's the access code? 390060. Okay. As Pastor always say. What did he say? You don't know what he said. You tell me what he said. I don't know, something about starting your day praying with St. Paul. <laughs> but listen, I'll tell you. We give away food Thursday and Fridays. You need an appointment for Thursday's food giveaway. So call the church at 301-567-4433 and make an appointment. <laughs> and Friday, just come through. Yeah, we partner with TCRC. We partner with TCRC to give away food from Trader Joe's. On Fridays. Mm -hmm, at 3 o'clock. But you got to be here on time because it goes fast, fast, fast. Mm -hmm. So last but not least, Warm Nights, which is one of our biggest outreach programs. <laughs> this year we're supporting over 200 men, women and children who Absolutely. are displaced. So if you still, it's not too late. You can still contribute. Just put a note in your contribution www.stpauloxahill.org and click on the Warm Nights tab. We need your help and we look forward to it. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Reggie and Tina. That was absolutely awesome. Listen, happy Mother's Day, everybody. Like Reggie and Tina said, we celebrate the mothers of the St. Paul Church, and we celebrate the mothers of the St. Paul fam. Now, that's whether you gave birth or you just been snatching up kids and teaching them the right way to go. We want to wish you a happy, happy Mother's Day. I want to remind you, like they said, about warm nights. We're coming around the bend on warm nights right now. If you take a look at this, you'll see some of the donations that we have been given. But we still need your donations. Your donations towards warm nights help us change the world. But your donations through your tithes and regular offering, they help us regularly change the world. Every dollar you give makes a difference. It changes lives, it builds the kingdom, and it's an investment in God's future for all of us. So I thank you for your giving. Please support Warm Nights and please give your tithes and regular offerings to support the ministry. We thank you in advance for all that you are about to do and we thank you in real time for all that you've done. Now let's give our tithes, regular offerings, and our Warm Nights. There are multiple ways that you can give to the St. Paul Church. You can give by clicking on the link on the screen in front of you. You can also give by going to our website, www.stpauloxenhill.org, and pressing the Give tab. If you want to give by using your cell phone, you can give through the Givelify app. Just search for St. Paul Church in Oxen Hill, and you'll find a picture of me and a picture of the church, so you know you're giving to the right place, and you can give safely and securely there. Last but not least, you can always mail your tithes and offerings to the St. Paul Church. You can mail them to 6634 St. Barnabas Road, Oxon Hill, Maryland, 20745, Attention Finance Ministry. As you give, remember what the word tells us. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you've decided in your hearts to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now, let's give abundantly unto the Lord.
Listen, I'm excited to continue the series of sermons we've been preaching and teaching together under the general rubric of thrive more than just getting by. And listen, what I want you to understand is, you know, the anchor scripture for this is from John chapter 10, verse 10, where Jesus simply says the thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I came so they would have life and have it more abundantly. God really does want us to have abundant lives. We, God wants us to have thriving lives, lives where we're growing and developing vigorously, lives where we're prospering and flourishing. And, you know, over the last two weeks, we've talked about a bunch of things. We talked the first week about getting uncomfortable. If you're really going to thrive, you're going to have to get uncomfortable. You're going to have to go into some places, go into some things, do some things differently than you've done them before. Because too many of us are used to surviving when God is calling us to thrive. So we're going to have to get uncomfortable. But last week we talked about how you're going to have to step up. If you're going to thrive, the level you were at is not always going to be good enough. You're going to have to step into new things, step into new responsibilities, step up and handle some things that you have not handled yet. And God will bless you to be there and God will give you anointing and grace for what you're stepping up and stepping into. But this week, there's something else I need you to see. And I literally mean there's something else I need you to see. This week, I want you to understand that in order to thrive, you have to see it for yourself. In other words, you have to have vision. That's right. This week's sermon is simply called, You Have to See It. I want you to understand, there is nothing that you can do in life if you can't see yourself doing it. You have to be able to have a mental picture and vision of you doing something in order for you to thrive in doing it well. You've got to see you in it. And for a lot of us, we can see it for other people. We can see it in other people. We have plenty of friends that we can see visions for them. We can say, I can see you starting your own business. I can see you going back to school. I can see your family coming together. I can see you thriving. But can you see it for yourself? You know, back when I used to interview for jobs, one of the blessed things about being a pastor is, listen, I like being a pastor. I'm not looking for anything else. But I remember back on job interviews, one of, the, one of my favorite questions, both as an interviewer and an interviewee, was simply this. Where do you see yourself in five years? If you've ever been on a job interview, you know oftentimes they will ask you this question because they want to see what you see. And I want to ask you, when is the last time you asked yourself, where do you see yourself in five years? Where do you see yourself in 10 years? You've got to have a vision for your future because what you can't see, you will never be. You've got to have a vision for where God can take you, a vision for what God can do. And you've got to see yourself in it. Not see it for somebody else, but see yourself prospering, see yourself flourishing, see yourself thriving. Because many of us, our history has shown us that thriving and flourishing and prospering, that's not for us, that's for other people. But I came to tell you, as you know in this sermon series, Jesus said, I came so that you would have life and have it more abundantly. But I need you to see it. Because if you'll see it, you'll begin to move towards it. If you'll see it, you'll begin to believe it. If you'll see it, you'll begin to believe that it is for you. And I want you to understand, this is not hocus pocus. This isn't name it and claim it. This isn't manifested and it'll come. This is Bible. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, these simple words. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law happy is he. That's the King James. That's how I learned it. But the NIV puts it a different way. Where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint, but blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction. I want you to understand what the word of God is saying. The word of God is simply saying that you have to see what God sees. See, in the King James, King James calls it vision. And the, in the NIV, they say where there is no revelation. What I want you to understand is that vision and revelation can be used interchangeably when you're talking about what God sees. 
Because see, when you've got a vision that matches God's view and God's vision, what you'll begin to see is that things will be revealed to you that do not yet exist. Things will be revealed to you that you're moving towards, not that you're walking in. And I want somebody that's watching right now to understand, when you begin to see what you're moving towards, as opposed to focusing on what you're walking in, you'll begin to realize that whatever I'm going through, whatever I'm dealing with, this is temporary because God's got more for me. Write it down in the comments. God's got more for me. When you begin to see that there's a vision for you, that God has planted something in you, that God sees and he wants you to see, you will not perish. You will start moving towards things. You will not cast off restraint, but you will be blessed. Understand, you have to see it. I can't say this enough. You have to see it. I can't see it for you. Your mama can't see it for you. Your friends can't see it for you. Because this is what we'll do. If we can't see it, we'll discount it. Here's what the discount looks like. That doesn't happen for people like me. It never works out that way for me. It, something always goes wrong when it comes to me. And what we begin to do is discount it because we can't see ourselves in it. But I want you to know that vision is important. Vision is important because at the end of the day, if there is no vision, you're going to have some real problems. If there is no vision, you will miss what God is doing. Because you've got to remember, God is a visionary. God is a visionary. Everything that God created, God created out of a vision for the future. Remember what the Bible tells us in the begin in the book of beginnings, in the book of Genesis. It says, in the beginning, God created. Now, what you have to realize is that while God was creating in the beginning, the truth of the matter is God saw what he was going to create in his own mind before he spoke it into existence. And what you've got to realize is that we are created in God's image, which doesn't just mean we look like God. It means that we can think like God and create like God. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, verse three, these simple words, by faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what is visible. In other words, when God created the universe at his command, what was in his mind became our reality. And I want you to know that there are going to be some things in your mind that have to be in your mind and you have to see them clear as day before they can become reality in your life. And I'm not talking about daydreams. I'm talking about a God imparted, a God implanted vision for you and your life going forward. I want you to understand God creates out of nothing. It's called creation ex nihilo. Creation ex nihilo simply means creating everything out of nothing. And for some of us, watch this. We don't believe that we can walk in what we see because we feel like we don't have enough. We feel like we're not smart enough. We're not strong enough. We're not educated enough. Here's the problem. You're probably not. You're probably not strong enough. You're probably not smart enough. You're probably not educated enough. You probably don't have what it takes yet. You see, the thing about vision is that vision shows you not who you are, but who you will be. And I want you to understand, it's not just can be. When you get a vision, you will have what will be, because here's the thing about vision. Vision will conquer you. Vision will corral you. Vision will grab a hold of you. Vision will begin to focus you and shift you. Vision will hold on to you because when you get a real vision, you can't let it go. When you get a real vision, you'll begin to work as if you've got everything to lose if you don't get there. From your mind comes your vision and from your vision comes your world. What you see is who you will become. But here's the thing you gotta understand. Vision isn't only important, vision has an effect. Notice what the passage said. It said where there is no vision, the people perish. It also says where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. In other words, if there's no vision, there's a problem. Understand, 
When the King James says, where there is no vision, the people perish, the question would be, why do people perish if there's no vision? And the answer is because they cast off restraint. When you don't have restraint, when you don't have a vision, you will run wild and do any old thing. When you cast off restraint, this is what will happen. You will cast off your ability to fully live the life that God has promised, to fully live the life that God has for you. Remember, Jesus Jesus said, I came so that you would have life and have it more abundantly. Too many of us, because of a lack of vision, we cast off restraint and we're not living at the level that the Lord came for because we're running here, there and everywhere. You can't thrive if you're all over the place. You see, a vision will require you to see yourself in the future, but it will require you also to become what you see. Here's the thing, if you're going to thrive, watch this, you're going to have to focus. And without a vision, you will not have focus. Without a vision, you will be all over the place. Without a vision, one week you'll be selling flat tummy tea. The next week you'll be doing Forex. The week after that, you'll be trying to be a crypto trader. The week after that, you'll try to be a life coach. You'll be running here, there, and everywhere doing this, that, and the other, all because you don't know where you're supposed to be going. But here's the thing, when you have a vision, it begins to restrain you from doing certain things. It begins to focus you and bring you in line so that you can start moving towards the picture that God has given you. I want you to understand. I don't want you to daydream. I want you to get a vision that aligns with what God says about you. Not what God says about me. Not what God says about Reggie. Not what God says about Tina. God says something about you. And you've got to have a vision for what God has said about you so that you move in that direction and become what God has for you to become. The more things you chase, the less things you'll catch. Here's the problem. If you're standing somewhere and you're trying to catch two things and they run in opposite directions, watch this. You'll never catch either one of them. You've got to put yourself in a place where you see the one thing where you see the thing and you see yourself living in it so that you can have what God has called you. Because the result of vision, as the verse tells us, is that he who has vision, he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Here's the problem. You will not be truly happy until you have a real vision for your life. You will not be able to really thrive until you have a clear picture of who you're go going to be, who you're trying to be, who you're fighting to become. You will not really thrive, but when you get that, you'll be able to work towards it. When you get that, you'll be able to set your life around it, and then you'll be happy. But here's the thing. What a vision gives you is the ability to move forward. Because here's the thing, and I found this, for all of us, without a vision, you won't be able to answer the most pressing question. Here's the pressing question. And I get it from my five-year-old all the time. Where are we going and are we there yet? It doesn't matter what's going on. When we get in the car, we strap him in, he's in his car seat. Next words out of his mouth, Dada, where are we going? Dada, how we get there? Dada, are we there yet? For you to be happy. For your family to be happy, you have to get to a point where you can answer the question, where are we going and are we there yet? Because a vision gives you where you're going and allows you to know when you've arrived. Here's the problem. Some of us have settled for less because we arrived at a place that wasn't the vision. We arrived at a place and we arrived at a place called good enough. We arrived at a place called, this is what I do. We arrived at a place called the ordinary. And what I want you to know is that if you're going to have life and have it more abundantly, you've got to have a vision for what life and abundance looks like. So the question becomes, if I've got to see it, if I've got to have a vision, what is a vision? I'm glad you asked. First thing you got to know about a vision is it can't just be any vision. 
It can't just be a daydream. It can't just be something you came up with in your head. A true vision to base your life around so that you can thrive has to be a God-planted seed growing inside of you. See, a God-planted seed growing inside of you as a vision is, watch this, what God has put you here for so that you can grow in to the purpose that God has put you here for. You've got to remember that when you have a vision from God, you will realize that it is bigger than you. You will realize that you're not ready for it, but you will realize that this could have only come from God. Here it is. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. Look at what the word of God says. Paul writes to the church in Ephesus. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. The riches of his glorious, glorious inheritance in his holy people. Look what Paul says. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. In other words, that your heart is can see so that you will have the hope of what God is doing. I want you to know sometimes <coughs> we give up because we can't see it in our hearts. Sometimes we don't get started because we haven't had the light come on on the inside yet. I pray for you today that after this word from God, the light in your heart will come on and you'll begin to see clearly the vision that God has planted there for you. I pray that after this word today, you will have the light of your heart come on so that you can see clearly your what, your where, your when, your why. So that you can see clearly the vision that God has given you because you have to see it. You won't thrive until you see it. You can't thrive until you see it because you'll always be confused about whether this is it and are we there yet? Where is it? What is it? And you'll live a life of confusion because there is no vision. But when you put a vision around it, when you can dig up what God is trying to do, you'll be able to see exactly where God is trying to take you. And I want you to know, my brother, I want you to know, my sister, God is trying to take you somewhere. God is not keeping you alive for you to stay where you are. God is not keeping you above ground for you to just struggle on and try to get by. God is not keeping you going because he doesn't have a purpose for you, doesn't have a vision for you. But you've got to see it for yourself so that you can know when you're in it. So that you can know when you're in the will of God, in the way of God, doing what God called you for. Listen, I want you to know this. These are going to be your vision testers. Watch this. I got five things for you that I'm out. Vision will provide you a picture for reference, a direction for movement, a focus for action, a benchmark for measurement, and a reason to celebrate. I want you to understand the first thing that vision gives you is a picture. Write it down, a picture. You've got to understand, vision gives you a picture so that you can see it for yourself. What's, what's the old saying? A picture is worth a thousand words. Because when you get a vision, you can begin to describe it. And when you start to describe it, you'll describe it so well that you'll be able to see it. And when you can see it and describe it, other people will see it with you. The book of Habakkuk says, write the vision and make it plain so that he who reads it can run with it. In other words, you've got to be able to paint a picture of what it looks like. Here's the question I got to ask you. In the vision of the future, what does God have you doing? Where does God have you doing it? How do you look at it? Are you fit while you're doing it? Are you sane while you're doing it? Are you stressed while you're doing it? Or have you found comfort? Have you found calm? Are you working hard but working on purpose? What does the picture look like? Because God will give you the picture, watch this, so you'll know when you're in the right place. Too many of us, if we're completely honest, we wind up in the wrong place because we don't know what a picture of the right place is. The power of imagination that God gives us is the ability to see what is not as if it is and then work towards what we see. But you need a picture 
to be working towards. You need a picture so that you can be painting that. And when I say painting that, so that you can start moving your life in the direction of what you're supposed to be seeing. Don't operate now if you don't know where you're trying to go. You've got to have a picture. It gives you a picture for reference so that you know if where I am doesn't line up with the picture, I've still got work to do. But here's the thing. Second thing I told you. A vision gives you a picture for reference. But the second thing it gives you is a direction for movement. Can we be honest? Some of us have wasted a lot of time because we've been going in the wrong directions. Some of us have wasted a lot of time because we've been moving. We just ain't been making no progress. Have you ever felt like you were on a hamster wheel? Y'all y'all remember hamsters. I remember in third grade, we got our first class pet. It was a hamster called Mr. Fluffy. I'm beginning to believe that everybody's hamster was called Mr. Fluffy. Because after all, you're talking about third graders. They see it's Fluffy, and you're supposed to call people Mr. Well, I don't know if they still do that, but when I was growing up and you had manners, you had to call everybody Mr. So we had Mr. Fluffy. And Mr. Fluffy's favorite thing to do was to be in his little, it, it wasn't a cat. Y'all know, you put him in a little aquarium so that the kids can see inside and he would be on his little hamster wheel just a running and here's the thing Mr. Fluffy never went anywhere but he used up a lot of energy how many of you are not going anywhere but you're losing but you're using up a lot of energy you're just going in circles you're just on the hamster wheel just on the hamster wheel what you've got to understand is that vision allows you to know which direction you should move in many of us watch this the reason we're confused in life is because if you don't know where you're going, you can go in any direction. If you don't know where you're going, you can take a left or a right. But when you've got vision, you realize that right may not take you to the right place. You realize that this left may be a left in the wrong direction. Vision gives you a direction for movement. And I want to tell somebody this. Don't move if it's not in the direction of your vision. Too many of us have compromised. Too many of us have walked away. Too many of us have fallen short. Too many of us have done just enough because we've compromised because we didn't want to go too far. And I want you to understand, when you've got a vision, the movement of everything in your life has to align and go in that direction so you can arrive at what God has put there. Everything you do should move you closer to the vision. Every day, you should be putting something into moving towards the vision that God gave you. Y'all know Noah, Noah and the ark? Noah was not an ark builder. Noah had a family. Noah, as we know, afterwards, he, uh, he, grew, he grew grapes. In other words, so Noah had the ability to farm. We never know what Noah was doing before he started building the ark. But what I do know is that Noah had to maintain his life while building the ark. And I want somebody to know who says, I just don't have time. You have time to build the vision and live your life. Because at a certain point, what you want is the vision and your life to connect. So the vision becomes your life. You've got to work on these things and make some progress every day and continually move in the direction of the vision. I told you, a vision gives you a picture for reference, a direction for movement, but then it also gives you a focus for your actions and your efforts. Your vision, watch this, should determine how you manage your time and manage your energy. Are you taking the actions that lead towards the vision God gave you? Or are you letting the world just drift you in whatever direction? I want you to understand when you have a vision, a God-given vision, and you're moving towards God's will, you begin to focus your effort, your energy, and your time. You begin to manage them in the direction of where you're trying to go. And watch this. I want to help somebody. A vision will help you not waste time, not waste energy, and not waste effort. Because if it's not going in the direction of where God has for me, if it's not going in the direction of what God has called me to, then I'm not doing it no more. Let me ask you a question. What can you cut out your life? 
if you had a clear vision of where you're going. Too many times, we keep extra stuff around because we got extra time. And you know what that's called? A distraction. The enemy will always give you plenty of extra stuff. The enemy will give you extra people. The enemy will give you extra time. The enemy, will even, the enemy will even give you extra money if it'll keep you from moving your efforts in the direction of your vision. You've got to understand Ephesians chapter 5 verses 15 through 16 says, See that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise ones, redeeming the time because the days are evil. In other words, make sure that you are carefully managing your life so that you use your time wisely because the days are not going to make it easy. Every day you're going to have the, the ability to be distracted. Every day you're going to have the ability to waste time. Every day you're going to have the ability to waste energy. But when you've got a vision, when you can see it, oh, when you can see it, you stop wasting time on stuff that doesn't matter. You stop wasting your energy on stuff that's not going to make a difference. When you have a real vision, if it doesn't build that, you don't do it. Because you begin to manage your life wisely. But here's the thing. You can't manage wisely if you don't know where you're managing to. You got to have a vision because it will give you the ability to make right choices about your time, your energy, and your effort. Now here's the fourth one. A vision will give you a benchmark for measurement. In other words, when you have a vision, this is your only question every day. You look at where you are. Am I closer to the vision now than I was yesterday? If the answer is yes, I want you to understand that's called a successful day. Many of us, have you ever gone through a day and not been able to figure out if it made a difference? Have you ever gone through a day and just wondered where did the day go? Have you gone through a day and realized I worked all day, I was up all day, but man, I don't know if it made any difference at all. And that's because you weren't working towards something. When you are working towards a vision, this is what will happen. You can look at where you are and compare it to where you're supposed to be and where you were. If you're even a step closer, that's a successful day. If you're a half a step closer, that's a successful day. When you take it a step back, that's a day that you want to do over on. Because when you have a benchmark for your success, because here's the problem. Too many times we use the wrong benchmarks. We compare ourselves to the wrong thing. Stop comparing yourself to folk on social media. Stop comparing yourself to people's highlights reels. Stop comparing yourself to your neighbor. You don't know where they're going or what they're going through. You've got to have a vision from God for yourself. And that's the only thing you compare yourself to. Compare yourself to who you were and who you're going to be. When you compare yourself to who you were and who you were going to be, as long as you're making progress, you're doing fine. It's not perfection. It's progress. If you can say, I'm not where I was, I'm not where I will be, but I am making progress, that's a good day. That's a good month. That's a good year. Because when you can look back and look forward and see that you're getting closer. You can say, I'm working on something. I'm working towards something. I'm making progress on something. Because here's the thing. Progress is exciting. I'm going to tell you how I know. Sometimes, I, I, I'm, going, I'm just going to be honest with this. Um, sometimes my wife leaves me in charge of the house because she be having stuff to do. And when, when she get home, the house is what you would call a mess? Yeah, a mess. Because it's me, it's the boy, and it's the dog. And cleaning ain't on our agenda. Fun is on our agenda. Fetch is on our agenda. Building blocks is on our agenda. And sometimes when my wife comes in the house, she looks around as if to say, I don't know what the three of you have been up to, but what did y'all do to my house? And that's when I realized I got some cleaning up to do. Now, now, here's the thing that I realized when I'm cleaning up. 
If I look at the whole thing, it's overwhelming. So this is my secret. I go clean the kitchen. Why the kitchen, you ask? Because it's a discreet area with discreet projects. And when it's done, I can say, baby, the house ain't perfect, but look at that kitchen. I want y'all to understand there are going to be some places in your life, some places in your walk, some places in your walk with God where you're going to look at your life and be like, this is a mess. Here's the thing. The thing about having a vision is you may not have straightened out the whole thing. You may not have gotten it all right, but you can pick one part and clean it up. You can pick one part and get it just right. Pick your kitchen and clean that up so that you've got a benchmark that allows you to know I'm getting closer to what God called me to. I'm getting closer to what God has put me here for. I'm getting closer to what God has for me. Because when you have a vision, y'all got to remember, when you have a vision, it will give you a picture for reference, a direction for movement, a focus for effort and action, a benchmark for measurement, and last but not least, it'll give you a reason to celebrate. I want you to understand when you have a vision, you have a reason to celebrate. You have a reason to celebrate because you can celebrate that you're making progress. You can celebrate that you're doing something that matters. You can celebrate that you're getting closer to what God has called you to. You can celebrate that things are getting better. You can celebrate that your efforts matter. You can celebrate when you're doing things that God has called you to. You can celebrate when you're getting closer. You can even celebrate that you failed because watch this. At least you know you were going in the wrong direction. So you can course correct and go in the right direction. It gives you a reason to celebrate because you know what you're working towards. You know what you're working on. And when you have a vision, watch this, especially when you know it's God giving because it's too big for you and there's no way you should be able to do it. Every bit of progress is a reminder that God is with me. Every bit of progress is a reminder that God is walking on my side. God is working on my behalf. I'm working with God on God's stuff. And you can celebrate when you know you're in the will of God. You can celebrate when you know you're in the way of God. You can celebrate when you know you're working on God-sized stuff, a God-sized vision in a God-sized way. It's a reason to celebrate day and night because you'll be able to say, I'm getting closer. I'm not where I was. I'm not where I will be, but I'm celebrating because the best is yet to come. I'm celebrating because God is keeping me and sustaining me. I'm celebrating because even when I fell back, I realized I can still move forward. I'm celebrating because I can see it from here. I can see myself healed. I can see myself whole. I can see myself doing what I was called to. I can see myself doing what I was graced for. I can see my family working out. I can see my marriage getting better. I can see my children succeeding. I can see it from here. I want you to know you'll be able to thrive when you can see it. See yourself working with God. See yourself walking with God. See yourself becoming who God made you to be. Jesus came so that you would have life and have it more abundantly. But to have life and have it more abundantly, you have to see it. Hey, thank you for joining us today. Do you see it? Do you see yourself in it? Do you see what God is calling you to? Listen, I want you to know, you can see yourself in it, but never see yourself in it without God. You've got to have a connection with God. You've got to be saved so that you can hear from God, enliven your heart so that you can see what God has planted in it. And when you can see it for yourself, you can start moving towards it. So if you're not saved, if you're not sure, if you don't have a church home or if you need special prayer, we want to do that for you here at the St. Paul Church. Just reach out to us and we'll reach right back out to you. If you want to be saved or find out more about salvation, if you need a church home or if you want special prayer, go to our website, www.stpauloxenhill.org. And under contact us, there'll be an option there just for you. Listen, if you want to support our ministry because you see what we're doing to change the world and you want to be a part of it, you want to invest in it. Listen, you're investing in kingdom ground. You're investing in good soil. And when you invest in kingdom ground and good soil, what you plant begins to bloom in your life and in the world. So I want to ask you, make a gift today to support our ministry. 
Doesn't have to be the biggest gift. Doesn't have to be the smallest gift. Whatever God puts on your heart is a great gift because every dollar counts. So if you want to make a gift to the St. Paul ministry, go to our website, www.stpauloxenhill.org slash give, and there'll be giving options right there for you. Listen, thank you for joining us. Make sure you join us again next week. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. Subscribe to us and like on YouTube so that you make sure that you're getting our content whenever we put it out. We want you to be a part of the St. Paul fam, and we don't want you to miss a thing. Speaking of not missing a thing, hang in there right now for the Williams Weekly Challenge. Word of God tells us not only be hearers of the word, but also doers of the word. Right now, you're looking at one of the cameras that we use here at the St. Paul Church. Here's what you got to understand about all of our cameras. They are no good unless they've got clear vision of what they're trying to take. I want you to understand, for you to be at your best, at your most productive in life, you've got to have a clear vision of where you're trying to go. In other words, you've got to see it for yourself. Listen, I want you to understand God has given all of us a vision for our lives. He's planted it down deep in us. And all you got to do is let it bloom and let it come to fruition. But you've got to cultivate that vision. My challenge to you this week, see it for yourself. Dig out the vision that God has given you so that you can see it for yourself and move in that direction. God bless you. I love you. And we'll see you next time.